Hey, come back to Ask a Monk. Today's question comes from JKIX22, who says, <clears throat> What is the best way when you are starting out not to get frustrated? I can't seem to keep my mind quiet enough. Um, the uh, one one thing to say is that the best way to start out is to uh, find a meditation center where you can undergo a, a intensive meditation course, because um, that'll help you to work out a lot of the um, the issues that you have, the frustration, the things that lead to frustration. <clears throat> when you're with the teacher, you get a lot of um, direct explanation. Um, and the intensity of the practice uh, really allows you to overcome so much of what what gets in your way in the beginning. There, there's such a, um, a power to the practice that uh, rather than being frustrated by the seeming uh, endless stream of, of hindrance and difficulty, uh, you feel you feel encouraged by the fact that in 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 a matter of days or weeks you're able to overcome it barring that or or even when you do go to do a meditation course it's important to understand that you're you're really um, in a sense answering yourself the reason that you're frustrated is because you you in in this case or or in generally there's a need to keep the mind quiet there's a judgment of the mind the mind is not quiet, that's bad, um, therefore I'm frustrated, and therefore there's something wrong. <clears throat> and that's really the problem, that's what we come to see in meditation. We're not practicing meditation to attain a specific state of being where the mind is always calm and peaceful. Um, we're trying to create a sense of ease and 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 peace but but lasting peace uh, rather than peace from it's peace with where we're able to be at peace with ourselves at peace with the mind where we're no longer judging the state of mind what we learn in the meditation um, boils down to three things we learn that everything inside of ourselves and in the world around us is changing there's nothing which is stable which is going to always be in a certain way, is always going to exist or is never going to arise. Everything is uncertain and unstable and impermanent. The second thing is that both inside of ourselves and in the world around us, uh, everything is necessarily unsatisfying because it's impermanent, because nothing lasts. So there's no one thing that you can hold on to and say that's going to make me happy. There's nothing in this world that that can be the object of your um, your happiness. True happiness to, happiness has to be um, unrelated to objects, unrelated to external phenomena, or unrelated to a specific experience. Happiness has to be a contentment that is able to uh, experience all things equally uh, as they are. And the third thing that we realize in the meditation is uh, that both inside of ourselves and in the world around us there's nothing that is that belongs to us and there's no there's no thing in the world that we can say is under our control that, that is truly ours because at best we're we're borrowing it or we're we're in control of it for a short time and we're only in control of it in a very limited sense in terms of uh, giving rise to certain effects based on 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 the on certain causes we can't force our minds to always be quiet when we try we find we only create tension and suffering we can't force pain to never arise we can't force happiness to stay we can't force things to always be the way we want it's because we don't see these three things because we think that uh, the world around us <coughs> or th uh, certain things are permanent that there are certain things are satisfying and certain things are um, controllable or, or under under our control, that we we create we give rise to frustration, that we're not satisfied, that we're always seeking and searching and wanting, 
and needing, uh, that we're not truly happy. So really the answer to your question is um, that through the practice you will see that yes, you can't keep your mind quiet and that's a good thing. And when you realize, it's not a good thing, it's a good thing to realize that because when you realize that um, and you realize that that's the nature of it rather than a problem, when you change, when your mind shifts, so because right now you're in this conflict state and, and this is what happens when you meditate. You, it comes in conflict with the way you think things should be. You think that your mind should be controllable. You think you should be able to say, stop thinking and 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 the mind quiets down and and now you're seeing that reality is not that way you're seeing the truth and it's it's clear from what you say you can't keep your mind quiet um, the problem is you have this judgment saying that it's not quiet enough and the, you know the, the question that you have to ask is quiet enough for what and quiet enough for your standards for your judgment for your need and the problem is not the the noise in the mind, the problem is your judgment of it, is the fact that we say to ourselves, uh, it, it's not acceptable, it's, it's not quiet enough. Once you can accept the fact that it's a part of nature and it's created by your, your way of life, the things you have done to make it that way, uh, then you, you start to realize that it it's it's not really a um, it's not really a problem per se, or it's not your problem in the sense that you have to do something to fix it. It's just naturally like that, and in fact, there is nothing particularly wrong with a uh, an active mind. That's just the nature of it. The problem is that we feel the need for it to be in a different way. Once you can see. It, <clears throat> and uh, see it for what it is and let it be the way it is you won't become frustrated so in a sense you're actually um, practicing well and it's a sign that you're actually doing things properly the fact that you're seeing um, the fact that you're seeing that things are not the way you, you, you thought they were you're seeing that the mind is not under your control and slowly as you practice in this way you overcome your frustration right now you're you're fighting and as you fight on and on and on, your mind slowly starts to give in, starts to say, okay, 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 let it be the way it is, I can't control it, and that's just the nature, that's not a problem, that's the way it is. And then you stop trying to force things, you stop trying to control things, and that's really a key to the realization of enlightenment in Buddhism. So I hope that helps, and I'd like to encourage you, because from my point of view, your practice is, is, is quite clear and, and you're on the right path. So just keep going, and slowly and patiently, you'll be able to overcome this frustration. Try to say to yourself, frustration, fr uh, sorry, frustrated, frustrated, or angry, angry. Uh, if you're thinking a lot, just say to yourself, distracted, distracted, so that you get to the point where you're able to accept it and move on. Okay, all the best.